What is up, people? Welcome to the latest episode of Game and Talk, the only Nintendo podcast that matters, arguably the best Nintendo podcast in the world. I am RGT85, joined as always by Josie Woe. Josie, how we doing? I'm great. I just built a new gaming chair, so I'm ready to go. What brand is it? I think it's some knockoff from Amazon, um, NGen. Hmm. That's kind of racist. Uh, Nate, how are we doing oh over God. there, Nate? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing well. I just conquered the campaign of Beat Saber, so I'm feeling quite Whoa. energetic and like I'm a ninja swinging around those blades like, you know, Shredder over here. No one can stop me. Hey, that DLC has finally been dated. It's been... Uh... My my physical copy came in my my big box. I haven't even opened it. I was just so disgusted that it finally showed up, and I was like, uh, like it I only wanted... took thirteen months. Yeah, but they yeah. made it seem the problem was they made it seem like this was all ready to go right out of the gate. Like, oh yeah, order it, and it's coming out in quarter three of twenty twenty two. It's like, oh okay, no, it's not. So that is my last limited run games purchase. I will not be buying anything else from them nothing against them but i just i don't see the point anymore it's i don't really care i just want to play does a it, game and that's it does it come with the dlc no oh, and, and you know it's funny <laughs> their their whole mantra used to be that they wouldn't release a physical game until the dlc was out and then they would release it but then of course they went back on that people have short-term memory and don't remember that but that was definitely their mantra that was the case yeah. and yeah they just you know what i gotta ask you a question about it because how do you feel that the vhs case is just a piece of cardboard that you have to fold and put together yourself uh it comes with a tape though like what's on i don't even know what's on the damn tape i just wanted it for the fucking shredder figure to be perfect does it come with it well, I've seen that. I saw the tape box, like the VHS box, but no. you have to put that together yourself. There's a there's a tape. Um, let me mm. see. I'm gonna run games. I got the Radical Edition. Um, yeah, there's a VHS tape. I don't know. Of course, I can't zoom in on their godforsaken website. Let me see here. See details. Um. Oh, it's a VHS. St- it's a retro slip cover and a VHS style, a retro VHS sleeve with a VHS tape box, size to store the game and steal. Oh, it's not a fucking actual tape. No, it's a piece, it's just a cardboard <laughs> thing that you have to fold together to make it look like a VHS tape. Yikes. So what did you really get for all that extra money? The shredder figure. That's all I really want. Oh, well, I got you got the little replica cabinet and the shadow box and stuff like it's not bad but was it worth the wait no and the box art is actually very cool so i might not even open it to be honest with you now that i know that that vhs isn't doing anything (laughs) well it'll look good next to the tmnt collection box art that had the technodrome and everything yeah the cowabunga collection yeah that was an awesome box art and i mean that was drawn by the artist so yeah, it, it's good stuff. Um, but yeah, um, I'm just I'm I'm done with them. Nothing personal. It's just I don't I don't need any more large collectors editions unless it's just like something absolutely incredible, like a Virtual Fighter or like a, um a Daytona USA or, or something crazy like that. Something something Sega related. I'm I'm good on it. But we're not here to talk about limited run. We're here to talk about Nintendo stuff. Kind of quiet, you know, there's been some things that have been happening here and there. Um, Pokemon Company coming under fire a little bit um, with their, they did an interview, it was with The Gamer, or no, it was with ComicBook.com, right? Mm. Yeah, okay. (laughs) It's with (laughs) ComicBook.com, and uh, some interesting quotes to take away from it, you know, trying to streamline production of Pokemon titles. They said uh, they don't want to force out too many games because they want to keep a high quality going to which I said, <laughs> your last game was not high quality. If that's your idea of high quality, that's insane. There's been rumors about a new engine. I don't know. It, it to me, like it, it's interesting that an interview took place, but it seemed like a lot of 
fluff within this interview. A lot of just mumbo jumbo, business as usual. We'll look into that sort of stuff. Nate, how, how did you see it? Yeah, I saw it in a similar way as you, that they're just coming out and they're giving that PR statement. It's basically, basically a stump speech. We're telling you we're going to do better, but we have no reason to believe this until we have actual games in our hands that we've seen the quality increase on all the pokemon games that have come out this generation maybe save for arceus has had various issues be it texture loading just general performance and scarlet and violet launched with a plethora of issues and they have not released a performance patch addressing these so you can't really look at this interview and those words and say, I believe the company is going to take the strides forward necessary to rectify these issues that have plagued Pokemon games this generation. Now, you can be hopeful and say they've looked at Scarlet and Violet and said, OK, this was a bad release for us. It has damaged our reputation and we have to do better. We have to do right by the consumer. But on the same token, wouldn't you expect them to then release a performance patch? address the issues with the game and do right by the consumer in that regard. So right now, I just view it as really a stump speech and little else until we have tangible evidence and proof in our hands with ideally the next Pokemon release, be it in 2024 or 2025. But until that happens, I'm not going to take them for their word and I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt. Josie, how are we feeling about the Pokemons? I agree with Nate. I think it's a lot of PR talk, and it's just, I feel like they probably heard a lot of that backlash of Scar Scarlet and Violet, and, you know, they're trying to do right by that by still not putting out that patch or anything, but, like, trying to say that their future games are going to be better and perform better and take more time, because the main criticism was that Arceus comes out and then that same year we had Scarlet and Violet, which they could have totally just taken another year to polish. Uh, and I hope that maybe that's the, the future we're going towards. But right now, there's really no tangible proof. So I think it's just something that we're going to have to wait to see if they are telling the truth or if it's just, like we said, PR talk. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it pretty much is. Like, the, the, they said supposedly there was a patch coming to Pokemon. We all know that that's not going to happen, a performance patch, a, a patch <laughs> dedicated to fixing the Well, people with a brain know that that's not going to happen. Some people just swore up and down. And it's like, no, dude. They, 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 the problem is, is they could take a shit in a box, write Pokemon on the side of it, and it's going to sell. Like, it, it always sells. And until there's a, a noticeable decline in sales or in revenue generated, they have no reason to change. And they could say whatever they want to say. They can... You know, put on this this front like, oh, yeah, we're going to make games better. I see people talking about Unreal Engine. Oh, they're going to use Unreal Engine. That means, for, first and foremost, it's coming from, I believe, Zippo. And Zippo sucks. Second off, <laughs> that means absolutely nothing. That, that, that means an engine means nothing. It's it's what you do with, with the engine and what you're able to get out of it. I don't know that Game Freak and Creatures Inc. know how to use modern engine. Like what 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 engine do they is it a proprietary engine that they're using for their games? Like I believe it it varies release to release. I believe the remakes that came out last year or the year before, I believe those were Unity, but I'm not a hundred percent. I'd have to fact check that. So and that that's really the crux of it. So let's say they do swap over to Unreal Engine. And let's say it's Unreal Engine 4. Not even We're not going to go at 5 with all the new bells and whistles. So it's Unreal Engine 4. Unless they have a large team who has you know, direct first-hand knowledge of how this engine works and it suits what they're doing with the game, the engine alone isn't going to save a project. You have to be well-tuned with this engine. You have to know how to take advantage of it. You have to know how to modify it and craft it to the hardware that you are making the game to. And there's a wide variety of Unreal Engine games on the Switch. You can look to Square Enix with Dragon Quest. 
a fantastic game that utilizes UE4 incredibly well on the hardware. You can look at Dragon Ball Fighters as another quality Unreal game. But then you can look at another project like Rhyme that oh, God. launched it. Yeah, it launched it in an exceptionally poor state. It had hitches, it had pop in issues. And you could, you know, you can credit that with this game. That game came out within the first six to eight months of the Switch. So maybe they weren't that well versed in the Switch hardware and they were still trying to, they were trying to port over a game that was far more ambitious than the hardware could reasonably stand to take on. But now you have Game Freak, you have Creatures, two studios who aren't well versed in terms of their visual fortitude. The most visually appealing Pokemon game is Pokken. Pokken Tournament is visually quite pleasing when you look at the Pokemon models. They're well detailed. You can see, you know, nice texture work on the shell of Blastoise. That is a visual looker. We're never going to get a Pokemon game at that level of visual fidelity. So all the talk of, oh, Game Freak is hiring for, you know, Unreal Engine. Preachers in their past have hired individuals who have experience with Unity and Unreal Engine. But these are standard middleware solutions. If you're a company, of course you want engineers who are familiar with the engines that are being used throughout the industry because you want to know what is available out there and you want to know your employees are you know, in tune with them. So if a day ever came that you are making a project with this engine, you have a staff that can use it. But now you look at Game Freak. This is a studio that people very often forget is a multi-plat studio. They do make games outside of Pokemon. They've released games on the PlayStation 4, like Tembo, the badass elephant. And they have a project right now with Private Division, known as Project Bloom. And that could easily be a project that's using Unreal Engine. Not saying it is, but if that's what they're hiring for, it may be related to something unrelated to Pokemon as a whole. Pokemon is a... Poorly, poorly oiled machine to Game Freak. They know when they want to churn them out. And I don't see them taking the time to really learn Unreal Engine and take years to craft a brand new Pokemon game using that engine. Because as they said, we want to release these games still at a steady pace, but we hope to increase the quality. That just doesn't add up to me. It feels as though you need to take a significant break and say, hey guys, we're going to sit down. We're going to boil this down to the bottom and we're going to address the core issues with these games. And if we don't have a brand new release for three years, four years, if that's what it takes, that's what we're going to do. Because when it comes time to release the next generation of Pokemon games, we're going to be there with a leading engine for the industry and we're going to wow people. I don't think that's their motivation. They know their audience is largely children. So why go out of your way to create a visually pleasing experience for a child who isn't going to be all that impressed whether Pikachu looks like Pikachu does in Scarlet and Violet or if Pikachu looks like what he does in Detective Pikachu coming out later this year where it's just an <laughs> ugly, dreadful looking creature? But I think, um, I don't know, because when we were kids, we always gravitated towards graphics of games. Like, has that changed has, has something with that changed? Because like you are, that's why you wanted the new systems because they looked better, and that was the first thing you noticed was true. Was the graph? Like I, I guess what you're saying is that kids today are fucking stupid compared to when we were kids. <laughs> I'd say it's more that Pokemon is still just that very, it's very popular in terms of the card game, the TV show, and if this is the game that's being offered to you. You have excitement to play the game. You're not looking at it for the visuals. You're looking at it because, oh, I like Eevee. I like Pikachu. I like the monsters of the game. I want to play this with my friends. You're not overly concerned of the visual fidelity of the game. You're not even that concerned with the performance because we played N64 games when they were 15 frames a second and kids are playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet at 22 frames a second. And it sold how many millions of copies in the mid 20 million? It was like 10 in the first three days. So yes. I'm sure it's crazy now. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's the thing. If I'm Game Freak, I don't think I would take the time to learn Unreal Engine 4 or any Unreal Engine because there's really no reason to commit that level of resources into a project to, you know, when you know you can sell doing what you've been doing for the better part of 25 years.
They'll never be the visual leaders. They've never been the visual leaders, and there's no reason for them to aspire to be a visual leader. Jose, yeah. how are we feeling? To your point about timing, I feel like they are probably not going to take the time they need to really learn Unreal Engine or really exp like do everything possible with it because they're on a deadline with the show, with the cards and everything, right? It kind of revolves around the game. So I'm assuming the reason they're putting out game after game like every single year is because they have a deadline to meet because all of the other merchandise and all of the other things surrounding Pokemon kind of hinge off the games. Is that right? It's a complex issue. Game Freak technically sets the timeline of when the new generation will start. So okay. right now in 2023, if they were to dictate that the next generation is coming out in 2029, the Pokemon company would then use that year for them to plan any of the merchandise, card games, TV show based on that timeline. So Game Freak does have flexibility, okay. but there is a hard deadline. Let's say if we're saying 2029, let's say the second half of 2027, where they cannot come in and say, hey, we need to delay the game because at yeah. that point, production, everything, the gears are in motion. Things are moving for those other merchandise and they can't afford the delay at that point. But until they reach that threshold, they have all right. the flexibility in the world. So they're kind of setting this deadline on themselves where they're saying we can get the game out this time. This is when we want the new generation to start. Nobody forces that on them. That is their decision and it's made at their discretion. Okay. Yeah. And then like the unreal point, I, I just think that it's really what you do with the engine. It's not like what, you know, the engine, like they have to learn and exploit it for what they can use it for. And Game Freak has proven to be a not super adequate developer. I mean, their best looking game, like you said, was Pokken. And then it was also Pokemon Snap, which was developed by Bandai Namco. And it's just like shows that there is obviously teams who are better out there who will work better. But I don't know. Well, I th and you know, going back to the engine thing, um, here's an Unreal Engine four game. Travis strikes again. No more heroes. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a real looker there. You know, beautiful game. Yeah. Bloodstain Ritual of the Night. That game ran great on the Nintendo Switch. I don't know what you're talking about. Like engines are just a means, and it's what you do with the engine. And I don't trust Game Freak to to do anything positive unless they decide hey you know what we're gonna spend some money we're gonna bring some people in who actually know how to use this engine and how to make it you know so that yeah. things look good and play good on our games there there's just there's no incentive and that's the thing like you can look at pikmin 4 an unreal engine 4 game looks amazing runs well but that took a number of years to develop and fine-tuned to achieve that visual fidelity and performance. You can also look at Yoshi's Crafted World, another Unreal Engine 4 game on the Switch. It was blurry. It had some issues here and there, generally a well-crafted release, but it ultimately still comes down to the skills of the individuals who are crafting the game. And we really have no reason to believe that Game Freak is skilled enough to take Unreal Engine and churn out a quality release in a timely manner. And until we see something that suggests otherwise, I don't believe that they're going to transition to Unreal Engine for Pokemon. And I mean, people look at Little Town Hero. They're, <laughs> I believe that was their one of their early HD games this generation, and people thought that was a sign of things to come for Pokemon. And Pokemon doesn't really come that close in terms of visual fidelity as that game put on screen. And I understand that game was significantly smaller in scope. It was more of a closed area, but you can still look at the detail of the characters and say, Pokemon hasn't quite achieved that. Now, how much of that is due to art style? Is it an intentional choice to make the main characters and the town and the general aesthetic of the Pokemon games the way they are? And they could be visually more pleasing, but they're just fixated on this. I don't even know what type of art style you want to describe it as. Maybe it's time to pivot and create a new art style for the Pokemon games. Because when you look at Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, where they had that kind of watercolor 
art approach and the Pokemon looked really cool in it. Why not try something like that with the mainline? Why not try a new visual approach to the mainline games? Because what you're doing right now, that artistic approach is just not that appealing. It looks like a Tales of game from the PlayStation 3 generation. Yeah, I mean, it's... Hmm. I, and I don't think they have... Because that's an undertaking. Changing the art style is an undertaking. And that would take a lot of work. Like, what do you do? Well, will fans like it and they're so worried. So once again, it, it all it all goes back to sales. It all goes back to how many copies of the game sell. And if they're selling 15 million, I don't think they care. I, I just don't. I think, you know, hey, moving on. Great, great job, guys. Move on to the next one. And, you know, there's just there's no real incentive to try to beef things up and make everything better. Yeah. I mean, if it's. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There you go. There you go. Speaking of broke things, um, we got some news about Nintendo's big holiday game in a roundabout way. We, we got the news, but upon further inspection, it does seem like this is indeed the case. Super Mario Brothers Wonder, a game based on playing with friends, multiple characters on screen at once, does not have or it appears at least, does not have online multiplayer. They made a tweet. It was Nintendo of Europe. Made a tweet talking about the game. Play with your friends locally. People started to ask about online. If you go to Nintendo's official website and look at the eShop listing for the game, there is only save cloud data that is listed for the online component of the game. So it appears that this game does not have any sort of online play so you have to play with local people which is fine if you're 12 years old or you live in a house with some people but most people you know adults they don't have that luxury so once again this is causing a stir you have diehard nintendo fans who will swallow their sword or fall on their whatever fall on their sword oh it's fine nobody uses it anyways I've seen hypothesis, great tweets, such as Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, which had online. Uh, it, the only reason it had online was because that game released in a pandemic. Stupid idiots. <laughs> to, to me, this just feels ridiculous. This feels ridiculous. It's 2023. It's a game based on multiplayer. Let's say not a lot of people use the multiplayer. It'll probably still have more people on it because of the sheer sales of the game than a game that's dedicated to multiplayer on another platform that people aren't playing. What is the reason? Why are people accepting of the fact that a basic feature that should be included in a game that has multiplayer in it, isn't in this game. Whichever one of you wants to start, and I don't care. To tell you the truth, I was like, I didn't realize that this was something that people wanted. I just didn't even think about it. Here like, we go. I, well, okay, I'm not going to like defend them, because like obviously it should be in the game, but I didn't even think of it being a feature that was needed just because no, see, like I, traditionally it hasn't you know but i don't i don't i'm not saying it, it's necessarily needed not that it needs to be a focal point but the option uh -huh. should be there it should be an option because yeah no like like you are obviously like in school and stuff if you want to play with someone you can right. but, but there's a large contingency of mario fans out there that are that grew up with mario that are a little bit older that you know, have things going like it would have been a perfect game for for spawn cast plays, but now true. we can't do it because there's there's no online multiplayer. Nate, what yeah. do you, what, oh, Josie, continue. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna say that I obviously think it would be really nice. I just like it didn't even register to me that that would be a thing that people wanted. But then when I was thinking about it, it was like really nice to have Mario 3D World online and stuff. So I think it is definitely disappointing. Yeah, I think that's the word. It 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 just rubs me the wrong way because yeah. you're paying for Nintendo Switch Online, the biggest game for the second half of 2023 from Nintendo, 
has a strong multiplayer component, and I can't play it online. Like it, it, it just it doesn't sit well with me. It doesn't as a consumer, it doesn't sit well with me. Nate, how are we feeling? It's a curious situation, isn't it? Curious, George. <laughs> when you look at the game, the multiplayer definitely isn't going to be a key component. It's not going to be something people go out of their way and buy the game for. You're not buying Mario Wonder to play with others. So it's a great complimentary option for those to play in a local environment. So parents can play with children. Siblings can play together. And then the matter of online, it's not necessarily a detractor from the release itself. It's still going to be a quality game. We're all going to buy it. We're going to play it. We're going to enjoy it. But when you do make a local co-op focused mode and then you omit online multiplayer on a platform where in which you play, you pay for online, the omission stands out more. And had Nintendo just been transparent, had they done an interview or when they rele- you know, released the first trailer of the game, and maybe we'll get further information as to why online is being restricted from this release and a developer's ask. It's just one of those situations, again, where you wouldn't have to wonder about this with another company. But with Nintendo, you have to wonder, is it going to be online? And then the way you find out that there's no online is through a random marketing tweet from one of the regions. That's not great communication. Not that there was anyone out there who was going to, going to buy Mario Wonder to play it online with friends. But it's just the idea that this is a feature that, yes, maybe not many were expecting. But I think people would have appreciated it being featured in the game, even if it were limited to just two-player online co-op. But the fact that there is none stands out. And it's just another case of Nintendo approaching online in a very lackluster, carefree manner. How committed are they to their online service? Based on this, or even the duration of the entire generation, you can say that they're not that invested in online. They just saw an avenue in which they could charge you $20 or $50 a year, give you access to a rental virtual console, and then say, well, you have Mario Kart, Splatoon, and Smash Brothers. That is essentially what we're charging you to play for online. Because the other offerings Nintendo has put forth this generation are few and far between. And this seems as though this is a release that should have had it as a secondary option. Didn't have to be at the forefront. Didn't have to be a key feature that they shouted from the rooftops. But it's nice to have that option for the player to enjoy. And as you mentioned, a lot of Nintendo Switch owners happen to be adults. So wouldn't it be great to be able to play a little bit of the game with your friends? And I get Nintendo's always been that company who has said, gaming is better when you're together. They've loved the idea of local multiplayer. But at the same token, Mario Wonder doesn't even support multiplayer in the same room across multiple Switches. So it's not as though I can sit in your house, bring my Switch, and we can play it on our respective Switches. We have to play it on your TV. So if you're on a bus, you're commuting, you can't all play together. So it just feels as though, yes, co-op is there, But this is essentially the exact same co-op that we had back on, what, the NES and Super NES, Mm -hmm. though that was limited to just one additional player. And 64. (laughs) And 64, you can do four players. (laughs) So it just comes down to that question of why is online not featured in some capacity? And people are going to reference Super Mario Maker 2, which had online and it was dreadful. It was very poorly implemented, but that speaks to Nintendo's means of implementing online they did a bad job at of it you're paying for online so why doesn't nintendo invest and make their online more functional in these types of releases and that's what they should have been able to do with this game just approach the online with a little bit of ambition and make it just that nice secondary feature that people can sit down and say hey i actually want to use this we're charging you for online so we may as well make that an offering to people The outright omission, though, it's an odd move by them, even if the game 
doesn't necessarily need the mode to stand out and be a success. I think my thing is two things. Um, first and foremost, if PlayStation or Xbox released a game in the year of our Lord 2023 that had local multiplayer only, first party title, it, people would lose their shit. You know, they'd be like, what the hell is this? This is half ass, blah, blah, blah. And Nintendo fans are just, oh, it's okay. It's like, you could be a fan of something and still be critical about I don't understand. I mean, obviously, it's a bigger topic for another day, but I don't understand when becoming a fan of something means that you love everything about it and you accept mm -hmm. everything about it and you never try to push back or voice your opinion. It's this weird tribalistic stuff that's happened because of social media and, you know, when I make the joke, I'm not a Nintendo YouTuber, that's what I mean. I'm not one of these people who's just going to be like, oh, well, it's okay. And that, No, if something bothers me, if I feel that there's a noticeable omission in something or there's a problem with something, I'm going to talk about it. I don't care if people get mad. Get mad. That's fine. We can still be friends. You can still watch me at the end of the day. You could, <laughs> all because you disagree with a person on an opinion about something doesn't mean you need to completely alienate them. But... The other thing is, it's like, you know, we have been it, the, the, going back to the to the Super Mario Maker 2 thing. That was so ridiculous because I remember independent Nintendo 3DS games that allowed three on three. Or that was three. On, I think it was four on four. It might have been four on four, but it was definitely at least three on three combat online. And it worked flawlessly. Do you know what game I'm talking about? Not you, Josie. No, um, uh, independent game. Independent game. Small studio. Mm -hmm. They're they're. I'll give you a clue. They're re-releasing it on the Switch. Brawlhalla. No, that was not on 3DS. <laughs> All right, I'm just throwing one out there. Um, hmm. which genre is it? It's a uh, shooter. Uh, was it? Is it that uh something Iron Ironfall Invasion? Okay, yeah. Okay. For, the Nintendo yep. 3DS mm. at online multiplayer DS Metroid Prime Hunters, a first party game, four player online, shooting people, had different characters, <laughs> Samus, and you had Trace, Silex. But somehow we're, we're regressing, we're going back. Is, is it a 2D platformer thing? Is that? The problem, we can figure out a three, because now people are saying, well, Sonic Superstars doesn't have it either. Which, to me, I don't feel like, I don't know, I guess it kind of is the same thing. But it's stripping all that away. What's a bigger company, Nintendo or Sega in 2023? Unfortunately, the answer is Nintendo. Should be <laughs> Sega. So, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I, you, look at beat 'em up games. Beat 'em up games. Right. You think you think Shredder's Revenge had a big budget? No. You think Cowabunga Collection had a big budget? No. They're taking old games and adding it online to them, and it works. I don't get this. I don't. Do you think it. that maybe in the future Nintendo's planning to implement it online, just oh, like God. later? I I pray not, because that's because that's, they've done that a few times. But well, let's say if that's the plan, then you have to communicate that. Right. Yeah. You have to communicate that ahead of release. Because when Super Mario right. Maker said we're not going to have online, there was huge backlash online. And then Nintendo said, okay, we're going to expedite adding the online to the game earlier than planned because we want to make people happy. And then it came, it performed horrendously, and people kind of moved on from Mario Maker 2 altogether because it was a very subpar release. And that's the thing. I think it's a lot of people just view the feature as non essential for this game. And I think it just goes back to Nintendo's idea of sit in a room together, laugh, and play the game together. Which, you know, we can play the game online, laugh. No, wait, we can't because the Switch's online system probably would require me to use my phone and hooking up a headset and then using the app to talk to you because Nintendo's approach to online this generation was still half-assed as they continue to approach online in all situations. So... It just feels like it's a non-essential idea to Nintendo. And I don't think it has anything to do with the genre itself. I could see where maybe, yes, if you have a poor connection and it has to progress 
with everybody on the screen. You can't have someone off the screen for too long or else it's going to kill the character. But that's exactly how the local co-op would run anyways. So it feels as though Nintendo just doesn't see it as a priority. And they either don't believe people are that dire to use the feature online or they're simply just it's Nintendo being Nintendo of we could do this feature but that requires extra work we have to deal with the infrastructure and we'd rather not implement this feature right now because we don't have to such a terrible way of how Nintendo yeah I think that's how a lot of Nintendo fans operate though too they're just like well it's Nintendo what can you expect Greatness. So. They're the biggest video. They how, how many fucking a million, they, uh, 130 million systems sold. They're generating revenue like crazy. In terms of online, though, in terms of online, upgrade you look your past, shit. Right. This isn't I'm, 2003 anymore. Right. You know who had online on their system? Sega Dreamcast. Sega Dreamcast. Nine nine ninety nine. Nine nine ninety nine. In the year of our Lord, two uh, nineteen ninety nine. Prince. 2000 triple zero party over it's out of time tonight we're gonna party like it's <laughs> 9999 online then I the, just bam you play quake three whatever but no nintendo still still struggling to figure it out it's like at some point in time especially when you're charging people you need to take it more seriously you know let, 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 let's be real Playing these N64 games online hasn't been the smoothest experience. You'll see a video coming out. I don't know if it's up already. At some point in time, it'll come out. But we played GoldenEye. It ran like shit. John was like, oh, I think it was better when I played it before. And then he looked at the footage from him <laughs> playing it before. He's like, oh, no, it's pretty much the same. And it's like, what are we doing? Like, I, I don't get this. Once again, going back to independent companies who can figure this out. And make it work and not have problems. Like, yes, online is never perfect. There's always going to be a dropped connection or something like that. I get it. But when independent companies are up showing, like, the main honcho of gaming, it's like, what are we doing here? Like, it's definitely tough because I, I know some people bring up maybe it's due to physics. Maybe it's due to speed. But the fact that 3D World had online a 3D game where more physics are happening, where there's a little more uncertainty in how things are going to play out. And you can look at PlayStation's own release with Little Big Adventure, which had online co-op. When you look at a 2D game, you would think this would be something they can solve for. And the only thing I could even rationalize as the reason is that the 2D Mario development studio it's just not well versed in online. They know it's not their forte. And instead of attempting at it, they simply bypass it. I don't know. I, it, it, it rubs me the wrong way. And it, I think I think the 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 fact that this is, you know, the big game for the second half of the big first party title for 2023, the second half of the year, just to not have it in there. It just feels I'm not going to say it worries me about the game, but it's like. Well, how much innovation is really going to be in this now? You know, like yeah, I feel a little bit lazy. Yeah, you kind of sold me on this revitalization of the 2D Mario genre, but you're missing out on something that's been in gaming for the past 20 years. You know, how much how much did you really change? You know, is this going to mm. be start the level, get to the end of the level, some crazy power ups to, you know, elongate you? Because really. If you think about that, how much different is that from when, you know, the new Super Mario Brothers franchise started and you had like the massive mushroom where you became like huge Mario and like went through the levels like, I don't know, I I'm sure it's still going to be a great game and it's still going to be an enjoyable game. Right. But I yeah. now I'm a little bit hesitant in thinking that this is a, a complete rehauling of of Mario as far as a 2D game is concerned. When you look at the 3D games. You know, they all kind of, I, I would say they, a lot of them draw inspiration from 64, but I feel like there's always something different. Like Galaxy had the whole, you know, different physics and the going between the planets and stuff like that. And, you know, Odyssey was more of a return to form. Sunshine, fuck Mario Sunshine. Um, you had the, the whole jet pack and, and water pack thing. It feels like they would rather take a risk on a 3D Mario game than a 2D Mario game, which makes no sense to me 
Because it's obviously cheaper to develop a, a 2D game than a 3D game. See, maybe that's the reason that they avoid online is because the 2D Mario games typically have more of a casual appeal. Like the 3D Mario games sell well. They appeal to a casual audience as well. But the 2D Mario games, because they are point A to B, they appeal to gamers of all ages. So maybe that's where Nintendo just views the game as we're not going to make it more complex by adding an online feature. But that's easily then debatable because if it's a secondary feature it doesn't take away that enjoyment that a casual player can have of just playing it on their own or playing it in their house with their child or their sibling it's just a secondary feature for those who may not have local friends or may not have the time to invite people over because they're 40 years old to play <laughs> mario you know during halftime of a football game just to be able to say, hey, Sean, want to play some Mario Wonder? I want to go through this level in some co-op. Yeah, sure. Let's hop on. Taking that feature away or that option away from us, it does feel regressive in the year of 2023. And I'm not concerned about the game's quality. I think the game is going to come out. It's going to be a fantastic 2D Mario game. It's just the idea that online is more or less a standard when it comes to games that feature multiplayer. And the fact that the fact of the matter is Mario Wonder features online or features multiplayer so it comes within reason to expect that the game would have some sort of online functionality the fact that it is missing just stands out and again i don't think it is a essential feature to the game but when you do craft a whole mode around local multiplayer an online alternative should be offered in some capacity yeah i i agree i i think like I said in the beginning, it's just kind of disappointing, but their line of thinking probably is akin to like what you were saying in the in the original. They just don't like Nate what you were saying before. They just probably don't want to overcomplicate things because in their head it might be too much for their average casual consumers. But at the same time, for people who want that and who need that, I mean, it's disappointing all things considered. What did we learn today? Nintendo thinks you're stupid, consumers. Nintendo thinks you're stupid and can't figure out. And, and that's another thing. The whole parents thing, I, I, I am not buying that as much anymore. Our parents didn't have video games growing up. All right, I'm 38. When, I, when my mom was 38, I was 20 years old. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like the, the parents of today with kids no video games or at least have experienced video games or have played video games probably grew up playing them like i don't think it's some far out there mythical idea of like oh i can't figure this out i'm stupid like no if you can't just go go online you have online on your phone like you could just look at how to get online like nintendo makes those stupid videos like how to access dlc and stuff <laughs> like that and people are like, why do they do that? Okay, let's say that they do think their audience, you know, some of them are not well-versed and stuff like that. You can't show a, a quick two-second tutorial about how to connect online. Like, I, I just don't buy it, man. But you see, that's, that's where that complication comes in. Because now you have this not in-tune consumer having to go online, having to look it up, having to figure right. it out through a step-by-step -step guide on YouTube. Do it, do it. No, you just do it on the freaking... Look, okay, wait a second. The only... Uh, no, I have a perfect counter for that. <laughs> the only people who would be playing the game online are people who already have Nintendo Switch online. So they already know how to access online stuff. They're the, they're the consumer sure. that understands how to do stuff like that. So right. all because there's a, a small fraction of people who might have bought this game and be like, oh, I'd like to play with, with Doug who lives in California. Oh, I don't know how to. Oh, it's so hard. Like uh, for the 30 people that that applies to, whatever, you know, do a little bit of research. But if you have Nintendo Switch online, you understand how online works. I mean, why is Doug from California? What's wrong with Doug? I don't know. Right, what's wrong with California? What's right what's with California? Jesus Christ. Uh, what are you I just, I just looked up some of the Mario games of this generation to see which ones have online features and which ones don't. And like 3D World has online. Luigi's Mansion 3 has online. The sports games have online. 
the only ones without online are the 2D Mario games. Our crap ass new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe <laughs> and this game. So it maybe it is a development team issue. Get it to because the... all these other like Luigi's Mansion, online co-op. It has online modes. Sports games obviously are going to have online. So these 3D games can get online. What is preventing the 2D? If there's a great answer, if Nintendo can come out and give an answer, an honest answer of due to the net code and the physics and the means in which the game has to be played or the speed, like they said, Sonic is too fast. That's why we can't do it. Okay, I will take that to heart and I will accept that answer. But right now, it just feels as though Nintendo doesn't view it as a priority and they'd rather not offer it to you. In where we've always said, an option is always a good thing to have when it comes to a video game. Give me the option of being able to play a game in a style that I prefer than not offering it to me. I agree. I agree as well. Anything else anyone wants to add to this topic? Speak now it's for not, hold your peace. It's not this it's not a, like the same as the topic, but you guys think they're gonna have difficulty options? It probably like uh, normal and infant that just came out of the did, womb. Because <laughs> they did in Kirby, and sometimes they have like different characters that make things easier. Yeah, I I, I think it, it won't be for difficult, like harder difficult. I think it'll be more so for like easier. easier. Yeah, like, for yeah, kids, like yeah. you can't fall off a ledge. They'll give you uh, invincibility tanuki suit or something <laughs> they, didn't have, they didn't have that shit on mario brothers one what's the deal when did these kids why? become pussified we grew wow. up in hard times what the hell what I, is <laughs> find the lie josie find the lie <laughs> i'll give you super mario world i'll give you super mario 64 didn't have a fucking easy option I'm about to blow Josie's mind blow it you know how sean and i had to play mario brothers one and three on the nes it didn't even have save states we had to just play the game from start to finish. Tough I had to do up. that on an emulator one time. That was a bad That's day. Like, the hell emulator were you using? That doesn't have save states? Well, okay, I was new, right, to save states, and I didn't realize that that was a thing. So I was just start to finishing it, and I didn't realize that there was that even was an option. You know what, Sean? I just thought of an idea. We're going to have Josie play Punch-Out. Yes, yes. I'm really good at Little Mac and Smash, so... I'm ready. Doesn't play anything like that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> do you think she? You think she'll? You, I don't think she can. You know, make it to Mike Tyson or Mr. Dream. How far do you think she would get? Bald bull. Or... Bald bull. Okay. I've I've played it like before, sort of, but I, I didn't got didn't get far at all. Did you lose to Glass Joe? I don't think so. I had a friend who told me he made it to Mike Tyson. He lost a Glass Joe for an hour. Yikes. Wow. Glass Joe had a winning record by the time we were done. Did, did he have like some sort of mental ailment? No. He just... Are you sure? He, I, like, I, saw, I saw Glass Joe do moves I didn't even know he could do. I, I never laughed so hard in my life watching him just repeatedly get knocked out by Glass Joe. And he's like, I swear, I, I beat Mike Tyson. I'm like, you never even reached Mike Tyson. I was like, you can't even <laughs> beat Glass Joe. He's like, oh, I'll do it right now. It went on for an hour before we just finally shut the game off on him. That's embarrassing and disgusting. All right, wow. so we're about at the 50-minute mark here. Um, anything else anyone wants to talk about? I will say... Red Dead? I will say I've been playing Red Dead. I have a video. I don't know. It'll be up by the time you watch this. I, I can't speak for the PlayStation people, and I understand why PlayStation fans would be upset, but this version on the Nintendo Switch is goddamn good. It looks yeah. good. It plays good. It sounds good. It controls good. There's no Vaseline smear when you're in handheld mode. The performance is rock solid. And yeah, is $50 too much? Probably. $40 would have been an easier pill to swallow. But I have no regrets of, of buying this game. Once again, I haven't played it in 13 years. It's never been on a Nintendo platform. 
people were all in an uproar over it. But it's funny because if you look at the Nintendo uh, YouTube channel, that video didn't get nearly as many downloads as the other ones. Though. People were like, oh, it's because Nintendo fans just accept everything. No, it's because this game is unavailable to play natively handheld. Mm-hmm. It's not on PC. Can't get it on your Steam Deck. Can't get it on Asus ROG Ally unless you're doing emulators and stuff like that. Which is not native, but yeah, a fucking phenom- If if it comes out full cartridge, everything on the cartridge, I'll buy it. I'll buy because it they did a f- phenomenal job. It looks better than it has ever. Well, at least for the original versions of the game, not including the upscaled uh, series versions of the game. But yes, I'm having a blast playing it. It's arguably Rockstar's. It, it's it's a top three Rockstar game of all time. You, you can make a case for it being number one, too. Just because I feel like the story is more rooted in reality. Everything is more rooted in reality this game. And most Grand Theft Autos are. But you always have those couple of missions or a couple of story elements or something where it's like, okay, you know, that, that's a bit over the top. Because, you know, that's that's how it's going to be. Also, all because it's an Xbox 360 game slash PS3, doesn't mean that it's going to be a good port. There have been bad ports of those games. Supposedly, this game's code was in shambles or something like that. But they they did a fucking great job. I'm I'm having a blast playing it again. Yeah, Are I you... think if you're worried about the price, too, it'll come down. I mean, Doom yeah. did the same thing. It was like $50, and then it came way down, so it'll go on sale. Do you miss the multiplayer, or do you feel as though that was just kind of a bonus to the original game back when it came out. Um, I never really played the multiplayer originally, but I can understand why someone would be upset by that that did play it because it's kind of like The Last of Us 1. Uh, when The Last of Us Part 1 came out with the remaster, it didn't have the online multiplayer. I actually played The Last of Us, the original version, on the PS3, and I played that multiplayer quite a bit. So I, I I feel like I would have bought that game if it had the online multiplayer. So if somebody feels that way, they're completely entitled to do such, and I would completely understand it. But, you know, being able to take a shit and play Red Dead, and it's looking good, and it's playing good, like, bro. It's, it's, it's just like Metal Gear. It's just like Batman. Like, all because it's an older game, doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad like there's a reason why they're re-releasing these older games because when you look at a lot of modern games you know there's been some pretty big critical disappointments and just disappointments in general so if you're on the fence about it i do have a video up um with gameplay footage of the switch version and you can see for yourself yeah i think it's a good game to re-release too because a lot of people grew up on the game and are now like nostalgic for it and have like the ability to actually buy it for themselves again. So I think it was really good timing too. And I think it holds up. Like it's not a yeah. game where, when you, like if you're, if you've never heard of this game before and you bought this for your, the Nintendo switch, you'd be like, Holy shit. This is one of the best looking games on the system. Like, look at this <laughs> big open world. Look at all these things I can do. Look at how the interaction is with the, the flora and the fauna and the animals and how people are and all these random things happening in the town. Like, if you woke up from a coma and you saw this running on the Switch, you wouldn't think twice about it. You'd be like, oh, $60, whatever. Like, it's it's that high quality. That's pretty impressive. I mean, there's definitely a lot of people who own a Switch now who are going to have interest in this title because they likely had never played it before because the game came out in 2009, I believe. Uh, so, I mean, 2010, 2010. Okay, 2010, 13 years ago. I mean, mm-hmm. so Josie was all of five. So this would be well, um, the first wise. introduction. How old are you? Seven? Seven. Oh, okay. Wow, big, di- big difference there. there. I remember yeah. this game vividly because my brother had it and it was scarring. So Because he'd skin the animals? He skinned the horse, and he's Joe's come in here, and I was like, "Cool, Seth, what's going on?" And then it was, it was a skinned horse. That's like traumatizing for a seven-year-old. That's should... why Sean likes the game. Yeah, he gets to skin a horse. Yeah, Ugh. fuck, dude. It's funny in my gameplay footage. Um, I was doing a mission, and fucking, I'm in a shootout, 
and I, I went into the slowdown mode and I'm shooting, I'm shooting. And all of a sudden my horse just runs in front of me and I'm like, bam, I'm like, oh fuck. I fucking lit that horse up and he died like <laughs> oh a motherfucker. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the worst. I don't think I can, <laughs> I don't think I can play that game. Do you like horses? That. No, but like, I don't know. That's sad. Why They've been does... your horse the whole game. What is with everyone hating on the equine? I don't, I just, I don't. I, I, I'll tell you off camera. There's very deep rooted hatred of the equine wow. and equestrian stuff in general. All right. I'm I'm not one of them. I just you, know. mm, you got a little horse stank on you. I do not. That's a lie. Well, thank you to our Patreon members for listening to this latest episode. We'll be back in two weeks, hopefully with some new topics to talk about. Obviously, Nintendo's been a bit quiet. You know. Um, those Nintendo YouTubers are looking for crumbs right now because a lot of them don't <laughs> review games. Um, I am RGT85, the asshole of the internet. Uh, Josie, <laughs> say goodbye. I, uh, goodbye, everyone. Thanks for thanks for listening. And uh, check out the Patreon. Check out the Patreon. I, I think if you don't. Yeah, and then Nathaniel. Yes, thank you for joining us on this. I guess you could say critical episode. Don't mm-hmm. confuse the critique with lack of excitement for the release, but. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Nintendo will have had their presence at Gamescom by mm-hmm. then. You know, you had some people putting out rumors out there about a month ago saying that maybe Nintendo will have a big big Gamescom. Maybe Switch 2 will be there. None of that's <laughs> going to happen. Wow. It's going to be a that's very crazy. It's going to be a very lackluster Gamescom for Nintendo with just the general stuff they typically bring to conventions. But maybe Nintendo and some partners begin to talk to the media and we get a few new rumors out of Gamescom. But we'll find out in you know, roughly a week, and if something happens, we will be here to discuss it. And for our special Patreon backers, we will be filming our Q&A right now. If you want to get in on that, be sure to upgrade your tier where you can ask us anything because I'm looking at these questions right now, and a lot of them are out there. We'll see you guys on the next episode.